special service of the Christian week keep of our beloved mother, Princess Florence 
Adi Guruyi. We pray that the good Lord will bless everyone in Jesus' name. As we have gathered to celebrate the life of this wonderful woman of God, the Lord will do glorious things in our life. To open this service with an opening prayer is our beloved pastor, the pastor in charge of Quara Province 1, Pastor Jonathan Olade. If you want to clap, clap very well. We are celebrating life today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we please close our hand, eyes to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord in heaven, we want to thank you for this program. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending of everything. Lord, as we gather here this evening all for this our Christian week, we pray, oh Lord, you take control in Jesus' name. As many as on their way coming, Father, we ask that you will protect and bring them here safely in Jesus' name. We declare this program now open in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' unique and correct name, we pray. Can I hear somebody say louder? Amen. Amen. And let someone shout a big hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We shall remain standing as we take our first hymn on this uh, glorious celebration of the wake keep uh, service for our mommy, our mama, our grandma, Princess Florence Abeke Adeguriuye. The hymn is found in page number two. So we'd like us to open to page number two as we sing Abide With Me. Fast for the even tide.
be seated. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, the first Bible reading for this special service of Christian Week Keep of our beloved mother, Princess Florence Adiburuyi, will be taken by our beloved our person, one of the family member, Debola. Omosheni Omosheni Praise God Can we jam our hands together for um, Okay Brother Debola Omosheni The Lord bless you The Bible reading will be taken from John Chapter 5 Verse 24 to 29. John chapter 5, verse 24 to 29. Praise the Lord. The Bible verse is taken from the book of John 5, 25 to 29. I start with 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. 26. For as the Father had life in himself, so had he given to the Son to have life in himself. 27. And had given him the authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. 29 and the final verse. And shall come forth, and they shall have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We're taking the second hymn, Why Seated? Jerusalem on high. Why the choir will lead us?
Let somebody shout hallelujah. May we all make Jerusalem the high praise in Jesus' name. Now the second Bible reading for tonight will be taken by Dr. Olumide Madariola. Please begin to come now. He's going to be reading Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9 to 17. And it's on page 5 of the program in your hand. Dr. Olumide Madariola. Please encourage him with a clap of prayer. Please. Thank you. Privilege to take the Bible readings. From taking from the book of Revelation, chapter 7. And I read from verse 9. The Bible says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with a white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, we seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their face and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, and saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And hence came they, 14 and the last. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, They are which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 15 continuing. Therefore, a day before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that seated on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. 17. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. But the Almighty God bless his reading in the name of Jesus. Please let's say amen. When is next? Amen means so be it. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. My prayer for everyone here present is that none of us shall miss heaven in Jesus' name. Now the third hymn we are going to be having tonight. Hymn three is when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. You can find it on page 7. Now we are going to take this hymn standing. Shall we just be upstanding please? Thank you. We shall take this hymn standing. Please let's be upstanding.
Amen. If you're sure when the road is called over yonder, you will be there. Can I hear you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. As of faith is so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. They taught the Bible reading for tonight's wonderful occasion. It is from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. And this will be taken by Mrs. Toyin Akombi. Mrs. Toyin Akombi. Please encourage her as she comes. Can we put our hands together for her? Let us encourage her as she comes. This Bible reading can be found on page 8 of the booklet in your hand. Page 8. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. Can you clap for her one more time to encourage her? Thank you very much. Good evening, church. The Bible reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Though therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou have heard of me among many weakness, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Verse three. Though therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that hath wrath entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Final verse. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you. I think we can do better than that. Can we just put our hands together for Jesus? Thank you very much. God bless you. Now the third hymn, the fourth hymn we are going to take tonight is When Peace Like a River Attends My Way. We are going to sit down while it is taken.
May it continue to be well with our souls in Jesus' name. The fourth Bible reading for tonight shall be taken from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. And it be taken by Pastor H.O. Adiyamo, the pastor in charge of region, region 37. Pastor H.O. Adiyamo, pastor in charge of region, region 37. Please put your hands together for him as he comes forward. Thank you very much, sir. Let's jam our hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, actually, the Bible reading will be taken by Mrs. Toye Akombi. Can we jam our hands together for Mrs. Toye Akombi? Thank you very much. Let's encourage her. God bless you. Yes, that way. God bless you. Good evening, church. But of the time and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto thee. For yourself, no, for yourself knows perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travel upon a woman with child, and they shall escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That, that, that they shall overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of dark, and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God had not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Thank you. Thank you. That is a double portion for you. Let's jam our hands together for her. Praise the Lord. It's time for special rendition. And we have this group that will first of all give their special rendition. Pastor Ralph and Dukbe Ogbe. Pastor Ralph and Dukbe Ogbe. If you are coming, can you please wave your hand? Pastor Ralph. Oh, you are there. Okay. Let's jam our hands together as we listen to this special rendition from Pastor Ralph and Duke Beogbe. Praise the Lord. As you're listening, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 To the glory of God, I'll be doing a song that is titled wasted years. We know that our mom, our grandmom really spent, God gave her longevity. It doesn't matter the age of a person. If you're not connected to Jesus, you're simply living a wasted life. The Lord bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. Have you one that the Lord all life's pathway have you lived without God a life of singing? And in my view, for the great eating meaning. How oh, is young and long life through it long and wasted years? Have you wandered along on life's pathway? Have you lived? Without God, a life of singing. And have you sang it for 
the great eating me. I is young and long life, food it long and wasted years. Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish. I still wonder in that nice and fear. Just turn around, I'll turn around. God is calling you, is calling you from a life of wasted years. I'm satisfied with it. Just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold, and in that ceiling where the ransom will shine. So search for we, some and the sick, understanding. There is someone who knows and he always can. Prayer and give it up, give it up. The Lord you are carrying in. You cannot go on with a life of wasted years. Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish I still wander in the place and fear Just turning around, out, turn around The Lord is calling you, is calling you From a life of wasted days As for me, this world is not my own I am just here passing through Shows are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I can see all the angels beckoning on me from heaven shopping door. I can't feel out of home in this world anymore. I, oh, I have got no other friends like you. What can I do? I can see all the angels beckoning on me from heaven's open door. And I can't, I cannot feel at all. And I can't feel at all in this world anymore. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. You will agree with me that this is a very wonderful song. Can we jam our hands together for the Lord? Praise the Lord. Right away, it's time to give testimony, tribute about the life and time of our beloved mother, Princess Florence Adiguroye. And we'll be taking four categories of people. The first set will be from the family. We need a representative of the family that will help us to capture the good things and all the things that Mama have done in, in the shortest time. And also, we need someone from the church. Mama is a prayerful person. If you look at her life and time, you will discover that she's a woman that loves God. So we need someone from the church to come and give testimony about the life of Princess Florence at the Goryoye. And one from the neighbor. Mama is not an island. She lives among people. 
and those people that she has lived among, they will have one thing or the other to say about her. And the fourth group, which is the fourth person, I doubt if that will be available, but paraventure we see Mama colleagues can also quick come out to share a testimony about this wonderful woman of God. Let me tell you that this woman died very young at a tender age of 101, a century plus one. Can we jam our hands together for Princess Florence Adegoroye? Yes. One representative from the family. Can we have one? Okay, as they are still consulting, can one representative from the church, either the church mama attended or where she grew up or where she, can we have one person? Okay, somebody is already coming from the family. Let's jam our hands together for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I wasn't meant to do this, but it's fine. It's a privilege to be from this lineage. A very big privilege to be a descendant of this great woman. I wouldn't be able to say much about how it has been before I was born, but the little I saw from my childhood till she passed away, and the one she told me out of our own history, I will try to capture a bit of everything and I believe that will represent nearly everything. How she came into being is sort of a mystery for me because I call her to my children. I say, your great-grandmother, just a wife of a prince, a prince but she's also a princess from about five royal family. And when I was born, I was privileged to meet Okay. Oh, you move here, yeah, move here. Yeah. Just move here. Okay. Move. I was privileged to meet her mother and her grandmother. So, I was born into the free generation of mothers, apart from my own mother, directly. Mama is, is just a total representation of who you would call a saint on earth. That's the only way to, to describe her. When my mother had me, I was practically left for her or left with her to take care of me till I grew up. And I grew up into adulthood. I grew up seeing her to pray in a manner that I've never seen anyone else doing. Those are the things that are important to me. She and her mother were the people I first saw as human beings that will practically pray while prostrating. And I, I couldn't ask them why. But later when I summoned the courage, she told me that was absolutely the ultimate way of reversing. When she finished that, then she will now kneel down. And the way they had their prayer session, you would think it's a whole lot of a congregation because 
is structured. And that was how we grew up. So when it's early in the morning, you'll be rest assured that the prayer sound will start. And I'm sure my fathers and my mothers here, that was how they met it. In the noon, the same thing. Three o'clock, the same thing. Midnight, the same thing. I'm about 60 now. And I tell you, that was how I've seen it. I saw her last in November. So that is who she is. In that aspect. When she used to take me to church as a baby, I realized that the whole church used to rally around her. Because she was married not just to a very influential person in the church, but she was married to a very top and influential politician and an educationist who was contemporary to Chief Esel Akitola and Co. and Chief Aulo. So I agree of seeing those things. But another thing that I know about Mama, which I took from it, this is not my testimony, I'm trying to describe her, is the fact that Mama can be very, very resilient. And I witnessed the 79 election, 83 election. So I saw what was going on. She was not just a motivating factor for her husband, but she was the strength of the whole clout of the husband. That was who she was. No matter how many they are, they will be fed before they leave. But Mama will not just welcome you with food. Leaving. But Mama will pray for you. So anyone that comes to see Mama, just be rest assured that you're going with a handbag full of prayers. That is wonderful. Can we run? Can we jam our hands together for the Lord? And the thing is, we all grew up, the whole descendant of Mama, including my fathers here, my mothers and my uncles. We all grew up to be rest assured that while we are in any pain or anything that is wrong with us, it's like you are broke and you go to the bank and you have your check or so, you are rest assured that once you tell mama, it's as good as God has answered. Because for mama, there is no little stress, no, no little pain. You take it farther than you expect. That is of her. About play. If the husband, grandfather, when he starts disciplining you, I don't want that's the story for another day. Mama will only come to your rescue when she has assessed the level and the measure of punishment you've taken. So she will deem that, okay, that is considerably okay for the offense you've committed. So at that moment, when the husband has finished dealing with you, then she will now take you and start petting you after receiving that beating. Wonderful. Let's jam our hands together for the but, Lord. <laughs> but you see, that helped nearly everyone. Apart from my dad, I have, I have my father Thank here. Thank you very much. And you, apart from every one of them, can you I are just going to, You can are I, going to write a book on Mama, the way you are going. You are let, going to let, write Let me just book. round this up, sir. Okay. Give me that privilege. I didn't want to talk until my uncle said I should speak. That's my mother. I've lived with her for more than 57 years. Yes. Mama, in summary, Mama can be very, very forgiving. Tell you about Mama. Mama would tell you, and she'll keep on praying. But most importantly, is the fact that she was an epitome of love. She loved her children. She loved her in-laws. Her sibling, her only sibling. She never, 
she was never tired of and I say this in conclusion that mama is a strength when you are in adversity moment of adversity that was the strength we have we lost someone and I can bet you thank you so much let's jam our hands together for, for our dear brother indeed mama has been wonderful no doubt about that mama has imparted a lot of life both family neighbors members of the church even in our own town mama is a great woman the lord bless you let's jump our hands together once again praise the lord and i want to encourage our dear brother uh, you can write a book on mama and that will be very good for younger generation to copy the, the virtue of a great woman of God. And I'll be willing to publish that book for you. Of the, okay, of the church. Praise the Lord. Um, praise the living Jesus. Well, um, I want to thank God. I'm speaking on behalf of the church. Um, I'm happy to... So, uh, let me permit me to use this word to pastor mama. <laughs> uh, well, like uh, my mommy and my daddy here will always say, the, the oldest member of my church. And the few times that we, we spent with her, we can see that mama loves God. She loves God. And um, she's, she's humbled. And she's, she has this gratitude. The last time she came to church, and um, we, we gave her a gift. So the woman or the lady that followed her to the church did not tell mama that we gave mama gifts that day. And later when mommy was talking to me, mommy emotion said, ah, mama said she must talk to you just to show appreciation. And mama make sure she's, she's she, she by herself, she, she, you know, she spoke with me and said she's, she really appreciate what we gave to her. And... The way she, she relates with us, like, she will always pray. When we say, she will always pray, she will always pray. She's a prayerful woman. And I want to thank God for a life well spent. God will keep the family in the name of Jesus. And she loves the younger ones. I don't know what she sees in us. Why, what she, she just, she will always say, that's my church, that's my church. So she believes in the younger generation. We thank God for her life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's jam our hands together for our dear pastor. Now, from the neighbor, from the neighbor, any of the neighbor where mama has lived before, any of the neighbor that mama has lived before, from the neighbor, will be willing to see a colleague too to come out, to come and give <laughs> testimony. Let's jam our hands together for our dear mommy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you know where Mama is, now you will shout hallelujah. <laughs> I knew Mama a few years ago. And the, day, the first day I saw her, I know this woman is a woman of God. You can be with Mama, you will not talk about anything. Mama, we pray, 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 pray. Even as a pastor, I know of Mama again. Mama, we begin to pray, 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 pray. And if Mama doesn't see you, she will ask. I remember there was a day when she sent her daughter, Mommy Oma said to me, to give me a gift. I, ah, wow, this Mama Agba, Mama Rupo, she's hold and still him put me in her mind to give me a gift. She's a giver and a lover of God. I know she's resting. Mama is not dead. She's resting at the bosom of the Almighty God. And she's evangelist to the core, lady evangelist. 
I categorize her as a lady evangelist and prophet and pastor. If you don't, don't, you don't need to clap for me. It's what I know about her that I'm saying. I cannot lie because mama, mama has gone. But what I know about her, she can pray, she say pastor, she say giver. Thank you very much, ma. Two things is a court woman of God, Princess Florence Adeguroye. She is a prayer warrior. She is a giver. Everybody that has come out today has mentioned these two virtues. And these two virtues is something that we need to look at is part of the virtue of God. God gave his only begotten son. God is also sending his Holy Spirit to us to intercede on our behalf. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to thank God for your life, for all those that have given tribute and testimony on behalf of our, our dear mother. Good Lord, we bless you in Jesus' name. Now, right now, we are going to listen to the best choir in the whole universe. They are going to render the special number. Immediately after the choir, uh, we have a saxophone in person of brother Enoch will be coming forward to usher in the man of God that God has prepared today to give the word of life in person of our special assistant to the general overseer in charge of administration Pastor Oladele Balogun. As you listen, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus.
Let someone shout hallelujah. People of God, we are here for celebration of life. Our mother left gloriously. She left this world as a centenarian. And I know think because of that, we need to celebrate this grace of God. Shall we please go ahead and shout hallelujah. Shall we please pray? Father Almighty, we want to thank you. We give you all the glory, all and all adoration. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the glorious exit of our mother. We thank you because she knew you before she saw death. We give you all the glory because she left an indelible mark on the sand of time. We thank you for an impactful life. We thank you for the great legacies she has left behind. We thank you for all the families, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren that survived her. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, as we go into your word, go with us. Every lesson you have prepared for us, give us the grace to learn them. Thank you because you have answered, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Let someone shout hallelujah. Shall we please be seated? I'd like to congratulate all the families of Adeboriye and Alade Shote for the glorious exit of our mother, Princess Florence Abeke Adeboriye. We give God all the glory. While I was sitting on the altar, I decided to check something. And I discover the United Nations put it on record that all the centenarians that are living in the whole world, they are less than half a million. Which then means that such uncommon grace, uncommon favor, God granted to Mama before she left. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Who knows whether if you clap very well. That grace can come upon you. Amen. I also want to congratulate our senior pastor, who is one of the children of Mama. I'm talking of Pastor Vincent Olurotimi Adeguriyoye. It is my prayer, as you have all come to give Mama a befitting barrier, great children will survive all of you in Jesus' name. I also bring greetings from our esteemed parents in the Lord, Daddy and Mommy Gio. Even though they are unavoidably absent, I want you to know that they are with us in the spirit. And that is why I know that today's program and that of tomorrow will go on well. Because Baba and Mama are praying for us. Go ahead and shout hallelujah. The title of my sermon is The Death of the Righteous. And I like to take my text from Numbers chapter 23, verse 10. Numbers 23, verse 10. The death of the righteous. Numbers 23.10 Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. I pray 
that you will end well. I want to hear your amen. And you will die the death of the righteous. It is an indisputable fact that every one of us will die. As it is written in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews 9, 27 says, It has been appointed unto man to die once. After that comes judgment. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. I want you to know that everybody will die. That is very, very certain. The more researchers, scholars, philosophers, theologians research about death, the more it is certain that every one of us will die. The Bible confirms that every one of us we have to pay this day. In one of my sermons that I preached on this altar not too long ago, I stated clearly that in the university of life, death is a compulsory cause. People of God, the young will die. The old will die. The poor will die. The rich will die. Professors will die. Believe me, pastors too will die. Every one of us will pay this debt. And that reminds me of a statement made by a German philosopher by the name Martins Heidegger. Martins Heidegger said, once you are born, you are old enough to die. He was telling us that a day old child is old enough to do what? To die. So I want you to know that when your own time comes, we, you will go. We thank God for the life of our mother, our matriarch, Princess Florence Abekaya de Gorioye. We have had the testimony. She lived a fulfilling life, a meaningful life, and when the appointed time came, she left. When your own time comes, when my own time comes, we will all go. But I want you to know, when we are talking about death, it is either you die as a righteous man, woman, or you die as the wicked. But the passage we read, who can count the dust of Jacob and the fourth part of Israel. Let me die the death of the righteous. You will know that when Balak invited Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel, even though God warned Balaam not to go, Balaam went, and when Balaam got there, instead of cursing, he began to bless the children of Israel. And in his blessing, he said, Let me die the death of the righteous, so that my hand can be like his. I pray, just as Mama Florence died the death of the righteous, as we have heard it in various testimony, may you also die as the righteous. I can't hear your amen. I said, may you also die as the righteous. If anybody closes his eyes on this earth, Without accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, the fellow is a wicked person. Anybody who will come to this world, live in this world, without giving his or life to Jesus is wicked. Anyone who is living, instead of helping others, like we heard about Mama Adeboreoye, she was helping others. She lived an impactful life. But if you are living your life, you are oppressing others. You are shitting others. You are shortchanging people. You are victimizing them. When you leave this world, you will die as the wicked. And once you die as the wicked, you will not be able to go through the valley of the shadow of death. 
because you will need Jesus to take you to. The Bible is full of examples of people who died the death of the wicked. An example is the rich man in the story told by the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, if you begin to read from verse 20, Jesus said, there was a certain rich man, she feared sumptuously, she enjoyed himself, he didn't have time for God, he didn't bother to help anybody. And when he died, he found himself in hell. Anybody who dies as the wicked, believe me, the fellow will go to the hell. And when we are talking about hell, hell is a place of torment, it's a place of pain, it's a place full of gnashing of teeth. This rich man went to hell. And in that story, Jesus said there was a beggar by the name Lazarus. When the beggar died, he went to Abraham's bosom. Permit me to say, the rich man did not go to hell because he was rich. Neither the poor man went to Abraham's bosom because he was poor. To assert that the rich man went to hell because he was rich is to commit a fallacy which cannot be validated by any scriptural evidence. The rich man went to hell because when he was alive, he didn't serve God, he didn't help people. Even there was a beggar as his gate. He did not even better bother to look at the beggar. He did not bother to do anything good for that beggar. And at the end of the day, he went to hell. Some people are even saying they are getting used to fire. Because of hellfire. But as a child of God, I want you to know, you don't need to get used to fire. By the grace of God, I am not going to hell. And I pray that you will not go to hell. If you don't want to go to hell, please don't die as the wicked. Because if you die as the wicked, you eventually find yourself in hell. Another example of someone who died as the wicked is King Ahab. King Ahab. King Ahab was the most impious king in the nation of Israel. When you read the story in 1 Kings chapter 21, 1 Kings chapter 21, you can read from verse 1 to 19. The king was so wicked to the extent that he plotted the death of Naboth. He collected his fine yard. And at the end of the day, after he has eliminated Naboth and his wife Jezebel told him, begin to rejoice now. God sent prophet Elijah to him that go and tell him as the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, so shall the dogs lick your own blood. Because of the evil which he did in the sight of God, people of God, this sermon is no longer for Mama Florence Abeke at the Gorioye. Mama came, she saw and conquered. She lived very well. She lived righteously. But the sermon is for you. Are you living as a righteous or you are living as a wicked? If you die as a wicked, you will go to hell. But my emphasis this evening is on the death of the righteous. Balaam said, let me die the death of the righteous so that my hand can be like his. I want you to help me tell your neighbor, you must ensure you die the death of the righteous. To your right and to your left, tell him or her. There is no controversy about it. Out of the mouth of two or three, the truth has shall be established because of the testimony tributes that people have given about mama and because of the caliber of people that are here even to honor. You discover that mama lived righteously. She died the death of the righteous. Now, you will discover that the death of the righteous is desirable. I pray 
that the Lord will give us the grace to die the death of the righteous. You know it was Balaam who prayed that may God allow him to die the death of the righteous. Unfortunately, Balaam who prayed that he wanted to die the death of the righteous did not die the death of the righteous. If you study your Bible, because God told him not to go and cause the children of Israel and he didn't obey God, he went against the instruction of God. At the end of the day, instead of cursing them, he was blessing them. But at the end of the day, he died the enemies of God. May you not die as the enemies, as the enemy of God. I can't hear your amen. amen. And may you not die with the enemies of God. Amen. Now, let me just answer one question and I close this sermon. Why is the death of the righteous desirable? Why must you pray that Father give me the grace to die the death of the righteous? Give me the grace to end like Mama, to end where, to finish where? Number one, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 10 7. Proverbs 10 7, the Bible says, Blessed is the memory of the just, but the name of the wicked shall rot. If you die as a righteous, the Bible says that your memory or your memory will be blessed. Some people will interpret it in Yoruba as didun, didun. If you die as a righteous, you suddenly discover that your memory will be what? Will be blessed. And that is why the death of the righteous is desirable. We have seen people die and people will say, Akuntuku, let, let him or her die again. Because when he has not died, what, what was he living for? But we thank God that the narrative of Mama's death is not like that. She saw Christ. She knew Christ before she passed on to glory. If you want your memory to be blessed, you must desire the death of of the righteous. You might want to ask me who is the righteous? The righteous is someone who has given his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The righteous is someone who is living a holy life. The righteous is someone who is helping others. Now that you and I are still alive, are you helping others? The position you are, God has put you there so that you can help others. The righteous are those who serve God who serve humanity, who are doing good, who are doing, who are obeying God, who are living a holy life. If you love the pleasure of sin and all you have been doing is to be corrupt, to commit sin and do this and do that, when you die, you will die as the wicked and you will not be able to enjoy the kingdom of God. And another reason why the death of the righteous is desirable is because their memories and legacies live on in the mind of the people. Go and check out. When you see people that have imparted their generation, when you see people that have given their life to Christ and they have done well and they are living a holy life, helping others, when they live, their memories their legacies will live on. From the tributes that have been said about Mama, you can begin to talk about her legacy. She served God with commitment. That's number one. Number two, we have been told that Mama was a prayer warrior. Number three, all the children of Mama that I know, they are well trained. That one will tell you that Mama too was a strict disciplinarian who had the fear of God. Let some Someone shout hallelujah. Let me ask your neighbor, what kind of legacies are you leaving behind? Ask him or her. What kind of legacies are you leaving behind? So when you die the death of the righteous, your memory and your legacies will live on in the mind of the people. That is why I know mama cannot be forgotten. Our brother who first gave the testimony, 
If not because of time, I'm telling you, he can write an encyclopedia on mama because of the good legacies of mama. If you die the right of the right, death of the righteous, if you do good, why you are not? If you live only, if you obey God, if you help others, if you don't ignore others, if you don't use your position to shit others, I can assure you, you will end well. Number three, another reason why the death of the righteous is desirable is that they will always be remembered for their good works. They will always be remembered for their good works. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation 14, 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, concerning the dead which are dead in Christ. They, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, see the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. Their works do follow them. Their good works do follow them. If you die as the righteous, all your good works will surely follow you. So maybe I should ask you a question. What, what kind of work are you doing? What kind of work are you doing? There are some of us now, when people see you, they run away. When they see you, they don't want you to see them because of the kind of work you are doing. We can learn from the life of Dockers in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. If you read the story from verse 39, when Dockers, also named Tabitha, when she died, all the widows came out. They said this woman was full of good works and the arms which she did. And they began to show Peter the coat, the garments she made for them. And they said, this woman cannot die because she was full of good works. Thank God at the end of the day, she was brought back to life. What will you be remembered for? Will you be remembered for good work or for bad work? And finally, the death of the righteous is desirable because the righteous will go to heaven. There is no doubt about it, Mama Florence Abeke, Adegorio is in Abraham's bosom because she died as the righteous. When you die as the righteous, you will inherit the kingdom of God, heaven. When you read Revelation 21, you will begin to see that heaven is a special place, garnished with gold, with silver, with diamond, with sapphire, and so on and so forth. Do you want to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm asking a question. Do you want to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible tells us that if it is only this world, we have hope. We are the most miserable among all men. If you don't want to end your journey, here on earth, die the death of the righteous so that you'll be able to inherit heaven. I pray that you will not miss heaven. If you are sincere about it, let your amen roar. I say you will not miss heaven. And I pray for all the children of mama, the legacies mama has left, the grace to continue in it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Let me close this sermon with a short story. In a particular town, there was an elderly man, there was an elderly man, known as a wise man, because this man was very wise, he could predict any situation, he could answer any tough question, any, any tough question. and because of his wisdom, people have been respecting him. One day, Two young boys planned a coup against this Baba. The two boys met and said, let us go and disgrace the wise man. We will conduct a test for him. Once he faced the test, people will know that he's not wise. He's only deceiving us. And the two boys planned between themselves 
that let us get a live butterfly and put it in, in one of us hands. When we get to Baba, we are going to ask Baba, we have a butterfly in our hand. Is he dead or alive? They said, if the Baba answer that the butterfly is dead, just release your hand so that the butterfly will go alive and everybody will know that that Baba is not wise. And if he says he's alive, just squeeze the butterfly dead before you open your hand so that people will still know that Baba is not wise. So when they got to Baba, they said, wise man, we have come to show you today that you are not wise. We are holding a butterfly in one of us hands and we want you to tell us, is he dead or alive? The Baba burst into laughter and looked at their faces and said, young men, whether dead or alive, it is in your hand. People of God, whether you die as the righteous or as the wicked, it is in your hand. Let me tell your neighbor, whether you die as the wicked or as the righteous, it is in your hand. But I plead with you, die like the righteous so that your end can be like that of Princess Florence Abeke Adeboroyoyi. Shall we please rise? Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Honor God, please rise to your feet. Lift up your two hands and say, My Father, my God, I want to die the death of the righteous. I want to finish well. I want to end well. Give me the grace to live only, to do good works. Shall we begin to pray? If you desire it and you ask God for it, I'm sure he's going to answer you. Some of us are not praying. Let God hear your voice. Say, my father, my God, I want to die the death of the righteous. I also want to see you before I see that. I want to live a righteous life. Help me, O oh Lord. I want to impart others. I want to finish well. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pray and say, Father, anything in my life that will allow me to go to hell or that will make me to go to hell, anything in my life that will not allow me to go to heaven, say, Father, or put it now. I want you to say that prayer. Shout the name Jesus and pray. Anything in my life that will not allow me to go to heaven or put it in the name of Jesus. I want to die the death of the righteous so that my hand can be like his. The death of the righteous is desirable. I want to make heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I want to end well like my mama. Help me, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Before I pray, peradventure you are here this evening. You have not yet given your life to Jesus. Just where you are, just lift up your right hand to God. I will pray with you. Maybe you once gave your life to Christ, but you have taken your life back. And you want to rededicate your life. Just lift up your right hand wherever you are. And as I begin to pray now, allow your amen to be resounding. In the name of Jesus. I still can't hear your amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the word of life you have sent unto us. We thank you for reminding us that the death of the righteous is desirable. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the grace to live our lives like the righteous, the grace to die the death of the righteous, release unto us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray whatever that is in our life that will not allow us to make heaven, uproot it in the name of Jesus. Uproot it in the name of Jesus. Your word says that it is not the speaker, nor the hearer that shall be justified. But the doer of the world, the grace to be the doer of your word, given to us in the name of Jesus. 
as many as have indicated that they want to surrender their lives unto you, I pray that you will save their souls, erase their names from the book of death, and write them in the book of life. Thank you because you have answered. Thank you because you have done it. The grace for Mama's children to continue in her legacy, release unto them. In Jesus' name, we pray. And someone will say it louder, amen. Another hallelujah of celebration of life. Thank you very much, sir. Can we jam our hands together for our dear pastor, Pastor Ladele Balogun, the special assistant to the general overseer on administration. I believe that all of us, our heart desire will be to die the death of the righteous. And God will grant our desire in Jesus' name. It's time to pray for the diseased family, their relatives, and all friends, and um, Mama, our church members, everybody related to Mama. Please kindly come forward as we invite to the podium one of the members of the, our church board of trustees, Pastor Mrs. Adetayo. Can we jump our hands together for my She comes forward to pay for the family. The children of Mama, their grandchildren, please come forward for this prayer. Mama is Aditayo Aditola. Oretayo Aditola. Let somebody who is happy to be here shout hallelujah. All who are rejoicing, praise the Lord. This evening we are here to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you adoration and majesty. Our Father and our God, we lift up our voices in your praise to say, you are a good God. You are the wonder working God. You gave Mama the privilege to live to 101 year old. Hello, me, go to stage in your one more. Mama. I do pray along with Yan, along with Yolong, while you are here. Pay a room, Mama, a Tony Tokuto. Nero Leia, one become a senior of Mama's children. King Womuro in law by the liquor and one by you say, Dada. Along with Yan, I bought Pewa. Along with Yak bought Pewa. I do pray along one lag barra. Pay a yellow long. Any tabatic pretend your telephone lorry or fell out down a dim mudo queen. Thank you for all the testimonies that you have concerning Mama. All the good works that she has done. Thank you, Lord, because her good work will not only follow her, the children will benefit from her good work. In the name of Jesus Christ, Almighty and Everlasting Father, we have started, Lord God Almighty, this celebration of life with the service of song and everything has gone very gloriously. Receive all the praise and thanks in the name of Jesus. We we'll continue tomorrow with the burial. Thank you because you will be with them. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. All who have come to rejoice with the children from far and near, we thank you for bringing them safely, and we thank you that they will return to their, very, their various destinations safely. 
Almighty and everlasting Father, Iku Mama E Ni Shela Kufa Loruko Jesu. And beginning from now, Almighty and everlasting Father, there will be testimonies of joy, Lord God Almighty, and rejoicing in their tabernacle in the name of Jesus. Almighty and everlasting Father, the pastor already said that Mama's legacy was the fact that the children were probably brought up. Almighty and everlasting Father, you will help the children to bring up their own children properly, and their children will bring up their children properly, and it will continue to be well with Mama's generation in the name of Jesus. Almighty and everlasting Father, I lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. Your mercy cover, let it always rest with them. Your protection cover, let it always rest with them. Everything they touch, let it prosper. Your word concerning the righteous, as, as the pastor has been preaching, is that the, ch the children of the righteous shall be delivered, they shall be blessed, they shall be mighty. Let, there be the, the, let this be the testimony of all the children that Mama has left behind in the name of Jesus. Continue to help them, continue to preserve them, continue to guide them, continue to lead them. In these perilous times, save them from every arm in the name of Jesus. And we will continuously give you praise and glory. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Mama's children, congratulations. Congratulations. God will continue to uphold you. Jesus. Thank you, man. God bless you. Let's jam our hands together for the children as they go back to their seat. Thank you very much, man. Praise God. The last aim for today.
Let's go. Till we see him in glory in Jesus' name. Praise God. Can we jam our hands together for the passion of this wonderful choir? Praise God. And I think Mama deserves it. Praise God. We want to thank God for what the Lord has done today. And by the special grace of God, tomorrow. It's the funeral service for our beloved mother, Princess Florence Adiboroye. The time is 8 a.m. lying in state at Cherit. Cherit is just beside us, opposite the church here. Our body will be lying down there gloriously. And then we invite friends and family, everyone to come and pay their last respect to come and we are goodbye tomorrow by 8 a.m. And by the grace of God, by 10 a.m., all roads will lead to this church, this sanctuary, by 10 a.m. By the grace of God, the funeral service will start 10 on the dot. Please, let's make sure we come early and God of heaven will bless you. Praise God. The interment will be at the RCCG Memorial Garden immediately after the funeral service. And the reception will be at the youth center along Green Road in the Redemption City. As you come and celebrate the life of this great woman of God, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. We want to specially recognize all our beloved senior pastor the pastor of region 42 our beloved pastor far away from Oyo state pastor gd you are highly welcome the lord will bless you in jesus name our pastor pastor Lade, the pastor in charge of quarter one 
And I'm a beloved pastor, the pastor in charge of region 12. Pastor Adeboye, you are highly welcome. All our most senior pastor, the wife of our AGO, the members of the board of trustees, I can see Baba Deyeye, uh, you are all welcome. And our mommy, mommy Ade Tola, uh, you are also welcome. All our senior pastor in the house, um, you are highly welcome. The special assistant to the general overseer on personnel, Pastor Julius Olalekon, you are also welcome. The man of God that gave us the word of God is the special assistant to the general overseer in charge of administration. We thank God for your life. And all our senior pastor, the elders, the pastor in charge of region, the regional evangelists, the members of the board of trustees, you are all welcome. The CGO, the national secretary, the pastor in charge of province, all the assistant pastor in charge of province, and our beloved administrator, you are all welcome. We recognize you. The God of heaven will bless you exceedingly in Jesus' name. And can you help me give a round of applause to this wonderful choir they've done beautifully well. Praise God. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to invite to the podium our beloved brother, Dr. Olumide, to kindly come forward to give the vote of thanks. And we recognize uh, the Olowo of Owo. Uh, the Olowo of Owo, sorry. The Olowo of Owo. Uh, we highly recognize you and all the chiefs and the ballast that came with our beloved Oba Dr. Ajibade, uh, we highly recognize you. No, uh, uh, our beloved mother, she's a princess, and where there is princess, there will be king. Uh, we recognize you. The Lord will bless you. Your kingdom will continue to flourish, and good things will never cease in our kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Dr. Lumide. Thank you, sir. Morning. Emi mi mo she o. Emi a won woli. I wo kuku lagbara wa. Emi mi mo she. I want to give God all the glory. For this awesome service of song, we can't expect it to be more than this. I want to believe that a lot of lessons has been learned. And one of my lessons that I've learned here is to ensure that everything I was taught, nurtured with, I continue with it and I meet her in heaven. On behalf of the family, my fathers and my mothers there, my uncles and my aunts, my nephews and cousins, the entire family of Mama, want to appreciate, first of all, the King of Kings, who has made it possible for every single one to be able to make this day, who started with us and is ending with us right now, I want to thank him so much for being a faithful father. This day was chosen. We never can tell. No one can predict tomorrow what will have happened before this day. But at the glory of God, it has started well and it's going to end well in the name of Jesus. So glory be to the King of Kings. Let me take this opportunity to thank our Father in the Lord for the work he's done so far which I believe is not ended yet in this ministry. Without the work that he has done, we will not find this hall to be gathered here in today. My thanks will go further to all the senior pastors, every single one that wanted to be here, but they couldn't come down here. We appreciate you so much. The family, thank you. We regard you. 
We believe that in love, you've done everything you've done today. Thank you so much, sirs and mas. Further appreciation will go to all the reality represented here. Adukwe Lowori Adu, we're so grateful. We thank you for all the effort you made to be here today. And again, you might say Mama is gone. But we want, I want to thank Mama. I thank his soul. Thank God for giving her to us. One of the reasons is that if Mama has not brought every one of us well, has not brought up so well, I don't think we'll be so proud of coming down here to say, Dad's our mother. Thank you, Mama, for all you did. We can't thank you. None of us can thank you. I want to say a big, big thanks to the church itself. And I want to say a big thanks to every single one that traveled far and near. Every single one. I don't know where you've come from, but for the effort you made, for the resources you put in, for the energy you, you've usurped, we are so grateful. For the love you've shown. It, some, some, of, some of you have spent money that we can't even pay back. We're so grateful to you. Thank you, everyone. We all believe that the most important thing is for us to strive hard and make heaven eventually so that our loved ones can be seen by every one of us again. Thank you. And I want to finish this and end it in the manner Mama will end it. Mama will say, may you be blessed with a pillar of cloud and may you be blessed by day and be blessed by the pillar of fire by night. And she will further tell you, hey, Baba, I mean, you are going to go to the house. And that is how I will end this. Thank you very much, everyone. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Olubide. Praise God. To close us for this Christian Week service is our beloved pastor, the pastor in charge of Region 12, Pastor Richard Adiboye. Let's jam our hands together as he come to the podium to give us the closing prayer and the benediction. Let us pray. Faithful Father, we just want to say thank you. We give you praise because you are the Harvard and the Omega. Thank you for the wonderful way you started with us. Thank you for your presence that permeated the atmosphere. Thank you for your blessings all along the way. Thank you for the word of life that you sent to us. Thank you for so many lessons that we have learned from this gathering. Daddy, please be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your name we go, we pray, Lord, that you will go ahead of us. You will go with us. By the time we return in the morning tomorrow, all of us will return back with testimony. Please watch over the remaining, the, the remaining activities. Don't let there be any accidents. There shall be no incidents. And there shall be no evil occurrences. Your hand shall be mighty upon the rest of the program. And your name shall be glorified. Thank you, eternal Father. And if paraventure you come be, be, before tomorrow, Lord eternal, let your mercy secure our place in heaven. We will not miss it, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can we please rise up as we share the grace together in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Somebody that is ready to die the death of the righteous, shout a louder, hallelujah. The Lord bless you, turn him in the morning tomorrow.